Hi, I'm Brian from TheEpicenter.com. Today we're going to try these two thermal electric generators. These are both water-cooled, and we sell both of these. They're made by different companies. This one is called the Power Pot, and this one is called the Cup Charger. Now, they both have a 5-watt maximum rating, but we're going to run them through the paces side-by-side side today, and we're going to run them with cold water, and we're going to run them until the water boils, and we'll determine what the continuous output is on both of these. And at the end of this video, we'll also talk about some differences between the two, and uh, we'll also answer some of the common questions, uh, things like sizes of all the components and the weight of the individual components and things like that. So anyway, stay tuned. We're going to start that test right now. Now we have one cup of ice in each one of these. Now this has a lot smaller capacity than this one. Uh, the ice is going to melt very quickly in both of them, but this will at least give you an idea of the maximum kind of power that you could see with very cold water. So I'm going to go ahead and get these started up. We have another camera down here that's going to be showing this. And, uh, and then I'll give some explanation as we continue along. So first off, we're going to get a little gas going. Okay, and we're just going to start this at about this level. Now, the these MSR pocket rockets um, start burning a little better as soon as they start warming up. So, anyway, I'm going to need to make some adjustments on this. And up here, we should start seeing some output voltage start. Down here, I'm going to go ahead and plug in this stepper motor so that these can start making adjustments okay and they're going to start uh, they're going to start making adjustments as the as the power starts coming up okay now we're going to come down here and start adjusting this fuel there we go okay and we're going to put about the same amount of heat into both of these we don't have a real good scientific way of doing this so basically we're just going to try to keep the flame uh, close to here and we're going to try to get the, the metal tips there red hot and about the same, the same brightness of red. This is not really critical and I'll show you why a little later in this video. Okay, so we'll have to, uh, we'll have to take a look at those again here pretty soon. But now we're starting to get power. And uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do a screen capture. So we'll get this going here. And let's see, here we go. And over here, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now the computer in the other room is actually recording everything that's going on on the screen. Now this software is called Web Expression. It's put out by Microsoft and uh, there's a free version that they didn't tell me only records for 10 minutes. So at some point this is going to stop recording and we'll just have to start it up again and I'll splice these two together. Uh, but anyway, here we are. The motors are doing their adjustment, and I'm going to go ahead. This is probably a good time to double check and make sure we have the same heat down here on both of these. Okay, and you can kind of go by uh, the sound. They, they have a, a hissing sound, so adjusting those until they sound about the same is not a bad way to go. So anyway, we'll just let this run for a while. Okay, a couple of things to note. All measurements that are in red are for the cup charger, and all measurements that are shown in green are for the power pot. Now this chart here is the output voltage at the USB connector on both devices. This one is for the output current on the same connector. Up here, this is the temperature of the coolant measured in degrees C. Now you're going to notice a blue horizontal line. That's a reference at 100 degrees C, which is where water boils. Okay, the chart here is the most important one. That's the calculated power. Now power is the product of voltage times the current in amps, 
and uh, there's also a blue line there. Now that blue line is at 3 watts so that we know if the output power is above or below 3 watts. While this is going, this isn't a bad time to uh, kind of go over what's happening. There's an Arduino processor over here and it is measuring both the voltage and the current from both the cup charger and the power pot. Okay, and then it's calculating uh, the power. Now it's also measuring the temperature with these K-type thermocouple uh, signal conditioners. These are digital. These are hooked up to digital uh, connections on the Arduino. The Arduino is also outputting uh, signals over to this step motor drive which is rotating those stepper motors. Now those stepper motors have gears on them. Okay, so as they turn, they're turning the big gear which is connected to a uh, variable resistor and uh, that's actually what's controlling the load. So the Arduino is making decisions about which way that that variable resistor needs to be turned, whether it's to increase the load or decrease the load. And so that's happening automatically. Now let me tell you about the, the stoves that we're using here. These are both MSR pocket rockets. Um, they're, a lot of people use these, they're very well known. So uh, the reason we're using the, these today, we don't sell these. Um, we sell a less expensive model uh, that's not made by MSR. But we're using these today because uh, they're identical and people know about these so they know how they work. And for the fuel, we're using Burton brand fuel. Uh, both these canisters have the same amount of fuel in them. And so anyway, we'll go ahead and let this run some more and, and uh, I'll give you some more info about all of this as we go along. Okay, now you can see that the, uh, the ice is almost melted in this one. This is the uh, power pot, and the ice has already melted in the cup charger. And you can see that the cup charger temperature here is increasing rapidly. Uh, the power pot temperature is still fairly low because it's got a lot more uh, water capacity. But now down here you can see that the power is beginning to drop off as this temperature increases. Okay, and so anyway, we will keep looking at that and, uh, and keep you updated. I've been going through the video and I realized that I didn't explain something very important. These knobs on the variable resistors that are moving back and forth are doing that for a very specific reason. Um, the maximum peak power tracking algorithm that I'm using is called Perturb and Observe. And what it does is it makes a set of measurements. Uh, I've got this set up to make four measurements for everything it measures and it takes an average and then it adjusts the load. It increases the load and it takes another set of measurements. Now it takes the difference between those to figure out whether the power has gone up or down. It also does that for the voltage. And then it also looks at how much it's gone up or how much it's gone down to decide what to do next with the variable resistor. So that decision is always being done. Even if the power is not changing, it still checks it and decides has it gone up or has it gone down and which way do I need to go. So it's continually making those adjustments. So anyway, when you see that happening, uh, that's what's going on. Okay, now you can see that the cup charger has hit 100 degrees C, and you see it's boiling violently over here, uh, and you see that the power is still slightly above 3 watts, so we're going to keep an eye on this, and, uh, and uh, that's about it.
Okay, now that is where Microsoft has stopped our recording. So, we're going to go ahead and get this started again. Here we go. How's this work? Over here. Okay. Yes. Alright. Okay, now from the temperature chart, you can see that the power pot water is beginning to boil. And in fact, it is. And over here, the temperature is nearing 100 C. And you see that the power has dropped off. Uh, the cup charger is staying fairly, fairly consistent in output power, and it looks like the looks like the power pot has dropped uh, down to about two and a half watts, and the cup charger is producing a little bit more than that. So what I may do is go ahead and increase the temperature a little bit on the power pot. I'm going to show you that increasing the temperature doesn't do a lot for you. What it basically does, there's, there's only a certain amount of energy that is actually used. The bulk of the energy is bypassed into the coolant to keep the modules from overheating. So increasing the temperature doesn't get you a lot more power. What it does do is it boils the water a lot faster, which means you have to add water a little bit more often uh, than if you just had a, a slow rolling boil. So I'm going to go ahead and make that uh, adjustment down here. And you can see that it, it does look like those two are at about the same amount of heat input. But I'm going to go ahead and adjust this up a little bit. Whoops, wrong direction. Now you can definitely hear that's like a jet engine right now. And let's take a look at what that does to the power. Okay, you can see that it does make a little bit of a difference on the output power. But it also makes that water boil like crazy, and it's actually boiling over onto the table right now. It's so violently boiling, and you can see that this is a little bit unstable. I am going to bring this down just a hair, uh, more like what the cup charger heat is set at. So, anyway, you see that 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 got about an extra half a watt or so of power. Um, again, the downside is a violent boil like that. Um, you do run the risk of having water boil all over your stuff. So anyway, this is more reasonable in terms of the amount of uh, boiling that you should expect. And like I said, any, any more heat than that really is not very useful. Okay, well that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off and this will show you uh, how long you still have power. Um, it does fall off fairly quickly, but let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to turn the, turn the heat off on this one and we'll do the same over here. Okay, and now you can see what's going to happen to the output power over here. And we'll just go ahead and let that roll for a little bit. So that's about it. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to talk about the test system. And uh, we're also going to talk about some differences uh, between the cup charger and the power pot. It occurred to me that you might like to see uh, what effect there is of adding cold water when these are boiling. So I've gone ahead and I brought them back up to a boiling temperature. And now I have just power displayed on the uh, on the display here, and we'll put that up here in full size. Okay, and uh, so now I'm going to add cold water. Now I don't have a lot of space in here, but you will see a dramatic change, and I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So we'll do that here. Okay, and we're going to do that over here. And you see what happens to the power? It's just shot up to uh, it's just shot up to five watts on the cup charger, and it looks like it's gone up to about four watts on the power pot. Now both of those values are coming down as this as this uh, water warms up again. 
but you can see that there is a, a large change and if you do have ice available uh, being able to dump some of this water and replace it with ice will get you power spikes like that so anyway thought you might be interested in that these are current prices as of summer 2013 so check our website for any kind of price change and these are all the specifications with the dimensions and the weights of all the components so hit the pause button now and then we're going to talk about differences they both have pluses and minuses let's go over that list first on the power I'm gonna give a plus to the cup charger it does output about a half a watt more power as far as the overall size I'm also gonna give the plus to the cup charger now that's subjective and because it's so small it does pose some other issues that we're going to talk about having to do with stoves because it's so small it's not going to work with every stove out there you can certainly reduce the size of the power pot by eliminating the the lid but this lid is actually a very functional item and uh, I'm actually going to give a plus on that lid to the power pot and I'm going to give a minus on the cup charger uh, now this lid has handles on it which makes it a cup which is pretty handy and it also has uh, handles on it that have a coating now this coating uh, keeps these handles from getting too hot so as far as the lid goes I give this one a plus also the handles on the main body have a coating on them and that keeps those cool and the cup charger does not um, on the power pot there's a connector here that's very high temperature it's short and the cable that connects to that is also a high temperature connector with uh, silicone based insulation and this cable is about 18 inches long and it's able to get this away from any kind of heat now the cup charger that we used in the demonstration is an earlier model that had a short cable here but it had a connector here that was plastic okay they have improved that and what they've done is they've increased the length of the cable uh, to get it away from the heat and then they put a silicone cover over the connector and they've also done that with the cable that connects to this um, but it does pose a little bit of a problem having this length of cable you have to kind of fuss with it uh, to coil that up and get it out of the way so cables are a plus on the power pot now let's take a look at the construction both of these have a heat collector uh, on the bottom the power pot is made uh, out of aluminum and this is anodized and it uses uh, rivet construction so there are rivets in here and there are rivets on the inside here um, the cup charger is again aluminum heat collector on the bottom uh, stainless steel construction this heat shield is stainless the body is stainless and the inside is stainless obviously and there's nothing protruding through the inside on the bottom of this there are parts that are welded on the inside underneath the here so anyway that's what they look like inside and out there's one final thing I forgot and that's that the power pot ships with a 5 LED flashlight it's got a USB connector on it uh, the cup charger doesn't but we do have additional 10 LED uh, USB flashlights available and that'll work with either one of them now because the bottom of the cup charger is so much smaller than the power pot the cup charger is not going to work well with every stove so an example is this one here the flame pattern on this actually extends beyond where the heat collector is and it's got a similar issue with this one uh, this flame actually comes out just to the edge on this on this one um, but either of these would work fine with the power pot now if you're looking for a wood stove to use with either one of these this is a really cool product that that I really like it's all stainless it's called the firebox stove folds up like that the cup charger uh, we have an adapter that can go up here on the top and that allows that to fit perfectly and of course the power pot can sit on top of these pot supports on the top um, now the one thing about that is 
It does mean you're going to get smoke and flame coming up the side, which isn't a big issue for a lot of people. Um, but if you want to keep this clean, we do actually have an adapter that's made for a different item. And that adapter can go right here. And what that allows is it allows the heat to transfer uh, to the pot, but it also shields the sides from smoke. One thing I wanted to show you is this USB lighting kit that we have, and it works with all of the thermoelectric generators we sell. Um, it consists of these lights. These are 10 LED lights that have USB connectors. We also have USB extension cords. Um, and we also have this USB hub. This is kind of handy because it's got four connectors. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the light here and I'll show you how much light this puts out. Alright, well that is it. The power pot and the cup charger. For the Epicenter.com, I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out.